Hello, my name is Ben Brownlee, and this is part three of our introduction to Particle Illusion, where we're going to look at how we can use motion tracking data and masking data right within Particle Illusion. And in this third shot, we're going to see how we can use other types of data to actually help drive our particles. And we're going to look at both motion tracking data and mask data. And in this case, I'm going to apply Particle Illusion directly onto my clip. And we're going to attach a particle to uh, our dancer's foot right here. And to do that, I'm going to change one of these transforms. And because we're attaching it to something, we want to transform the emitter. So the, the emitter sticks with this area. Now, as soon as I've turned on emitter, I get another drop down box open up for us, which is the motion tracker mocha drop down. So I'm going to open that up. And in here, I can just click on mocha motion tracking. And I have a version of Boris Effects Mocha Motion Tracker built directly into this plugin. So we don't have to worry about copying and pasting data between anything. We've got it right here. So if you've ever used Mocha before, you'll know how good it is at tracking stuff in. If you haven't used Mocha before, don't worry too much about it. We're not going to go too deep in. I'm just going to show you quickly how we can start using that data. Now, I'm going to turn off the visibility and the processing on the world center in the top left in my layer controls. I'm going to come into my viewer and I'm just going to click and drag the transform box around my emitter offset search area. Um, all I want to do is actually just track translation. I don't want to track scale or, or rotation in this particular case. And I'm just going to track that through. Now, this is not going to be 100% accurate. It can't be because the way that the foot is moving around, it's not going to be 100% accurate all the time. What I'm trying to do with this case is just actually get us in the right sort of ballpark with the stuff that we're tracking in. So when this search area seems to be dropping off a little bit, I'm just hitting the escape key and I'm repositioning the uh, emitter offset search area back over to the foot. So once that's finished right at the end, I'm just going to play that backwards. And you'll see the, the search area itself sort of isn't exactly where we had it uh, at the very start, but it's given us a good idea of that movement. The reason it's not stuck to where we had it right at the very start is because when we've been tracking it through, it's been placing that data over here in this emitter offset. And this is the thing that we're looking at. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking at a nice smooth type of motion going on along the emitter offset. If it's not exactly in the right place, it's fine. We can easily change that up back when we get into After Effects. So this might not look perfect for now, but it's good enough for jazz. So we are going to save this here. We're going to come out and exit. And everything's looking exactly the same. It doesn't look like it's done anything. The reason for that is because we haven't done anything in Particle Illusion. So we're now going to tell it what particle to place on the foot. Um, and I'm going to look for some sort of trail type thing. Uh, we have a whole load of trails. We have some sparkly trails. We have a meteor trail. That's like quite nice. And we have tons of cool trails. And down at the bottom, we have this DNA trails. I quite like that. That's good. And in this case, I'm just going to plant my DNA trails boom, directly on his foot. And let's just hit play. And you can see without me having to do anything else, that tracking data is applied to my uh, emitter. Let's, uh, let's take us around about here. Let's see if we want to change any of this effect up. Um, I might just change the life up a little bit. Uh, and change the spin just a little bit as well. Okay, hit apply on that. So now we want to get this so it's actually matching the, uh, the foot here. So all I'm going to do is come over to my particle illusion properties. And under the emitter offset, I'm going to start keyframing this offset uh, X and Y2. And then when it has drifted off enough, so around about here, all I'm going to do is just tweak that up a little bit. So it's fitting a bit more in there. Just move that along a little bit more, around about there. It's falling away quite a bit. Let's take us to the end. I could be a lot more sort of patient and attentive and really getting this absolutely perfect, but you get the idea. 
So we've used one, two, three, four little keyframes to get that into place on top of our tracking data, which admittedly was not perfect. And we knew it wasn't going to be perfect at the time. Now we can keyframe stuff up directly in Particle Illusion. You see the position emitter here can also be keyframed with linear or Bezier keyframes. We can also come down here, turn on animation mode and just keyframe stuff. There we go, just directly in the viewer if we want to. And in this case, I really don't want to. I don't want to have to be in charge of keyframing all of this complex movement. I'd much rather have the motion tracker do most of the heavy lifting for me and then just me tweaking that last little bit right at the very end. Now, one of the other things that we can do with Mocha, if I just apply a second version of this effect here, is we can also use this to mask things out. So I'm going to add another effect when his hand hits the floor down there. Let's do some sort of hit. Uh, and we've got the uh, or light hit there. Oh, we've got an angry, angry hit here. I don't want it to be that angry. Maybe just a, a blue hit here. There we go. And I can control when these particles start. If I want this explosion to happen, when he puts his hand down around about there, I'm just going to come to that frame and I'm going to click on his hand around about there. And you'll see that my start frame on this um, ground hit blue is frame 57. Now, as I'm playing this through in the viewer, I might not want to see the whole clip all the way through, especially if it's just a small effect that we've got here. So what I can do is I can always choose the range of where my view is playing from just by clicking and dragging the in point and the out point over here. And now when I hit play, it's only playing along that range there. So I can use this to then um, change the size of this down while it's playing back in real time. And I can change the life as well so that it, the effect fades out before we hit that second leg. So that's probably going to be around about a life of 20, maybe 17. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's cool. And if I want to see the whole thing playing back again, all I have to do is just double click in the play range and that will then reset that to play the whole clip from in to out. Let's have a look there. Boom. Yeah, that's nice. Now, it doesn't take an eagle-eyed person to see that there might be a little bit of a problem there. Yet, when his foot goes over there, it's not blocking the effect. So the uh, particles are still playing over the top of his foot, completely ruining any illusion that we had. Let's hit apply on this and see what we can do. Okay, let's come to the area where it's causing a problem, round right about there, let's say. There we go. That's the first, first frame where we want to mask something out. So what I can do is I can come down to Pixel Chooser in my Particle Illusion properties, and I can twirl that open, and I can click on Mocha Mask slash Track. There we go. And what I can now do is just use my normal Mocha Shape tools. And I can use my Mocha Magnetic Shape here to just draw the, around this. I'm going to click, 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 click. And every time I click, it's adding another little point for me, and I don't have to be hugely precise with this. And I'm just going to right click just to close that up there. Now, this is obviously a lot more of a complex shape than we need it to be. So I'm going to click on my magnetic thing here and just turn the details down. There we go. Cool. Back to my picker tool. Right click on one of the handles and just soften those out. Now, for the type of work we're doing here, we don't have to be pixel perfect. This is more than good enough. And we're going to leave all of these track motion options as they are. So tracking in translation, scale, rotation, and skew, and track that forwards for the few frames. Hit escape on that. And you see it's done a nice little track on there. What I will need to do, though, is just expand out some of these here because we're seeing a lot of area that we couldn't see before. Where are you? There we go. See how that is down at the bottom there. That's really the only interesting bit we're looking at. It's not great, so I'll just transform that in there. That's going to look all right. And let's track this a few frames backwards just so we get that out of the way. Cool. And now I can set my in and out point on this mask as well, just in the uh, layer properties here. So in point, 
set that there. Out point, find the last frame we've tracked, set that there. Good stuff. Okay, let's save this one out and exit. And now our effect has completely disappeared. Okay, hmm, where's it gone? Well, let's have a little look where it's gone. Let's uh, view that mask or mat. And we now have a black and white mask. Wherever it's white, it's going to be showing the effect. Wherever it's black, it's not going to be showing the effect. So at the moment, we can see this is exactly opposite what we want it to be. So let's open up our mask, invert that. And I can even feather that a little bit. Let's turn off that view mask mat shape. And we now have our effect in there. Do a quick round preview. There we go. And now we've got our mask working. We've got our tracking working. And this is the start of something quite interesting. Now, one other thing I wanted to show on this particular clip before we move on is if I come up to the composite style up here, at the moment we've got this set to direct classic mode, which means it's going to take the particle illusion and then slap it on top of the image as we have here. And let's just come over around about here and pop into our trails uh, particle illusion. I'm going to change this composite mode to alpha plus apply mode. So if we do that, all of a sudden we only see the particle illusion effect because it's asking us to see what apply mode we want. We can do normal, which is just using the alpha channel and putting a normal one on there. That's looking much less exciting than the classic mode was, that's for sure. But we can change this to other things. We can change this to screen mode. We could change this to overlay. Um, let's take this to hard light here. And this looks quite harsh. But we also have this apply mix. And what does this apply mix do? When we take this apply mix down to zero, we're just getting the normal blend mode back in again. But if I bring this back up now, we can start mixing those two modes together. Maybe let's bring this to screen. So we can choose how much we go between the screen and the normal apply mode. So I can really start to fit that in a lot better than I could previously. We'll tweak that up a little bit. So we can start to play with blend modes all while having the particle illusion effect on the original clip rather than having to put it on a, a separate black layer over the top and then using After Effects own blend modes. And that's starting to look quite fun there. There we go. So in this third section, we've started to see how we can incorporate motion tracking data and masking data all coming through from the built-in version of Mocha in Particle Illusion. And it's very powerful for doing quite complex masking or animated emitters. Please join me in part four of this tutorial where we're going to be expanding on some of these ideas we've seen previously. And among other things, we're going to be looking more deeply at the difference between world and emitter transforms. And we're going to be exploding a seagull. Thanks for watching and be sure to go to BorisFX.com and download a free trial of Continuum Complete where you'll find Particle Illusion. Also, subscribe to the Boris YouTube channel by clicking on the link above to stay up to date with the latest information and training materials on all the Boris Effects products.